In this process simulator solution, we will show you how to determine the time an entity spends in an activity's in buffer or out buffer. Let's take a look at this example. In this model, here in activity one, um, it has an in buffer and an out buffer, and I want to know how much time my entities are spending in those buffers. The first thing I need to do is define a couple variables and an attribute in my model. So I'll right click here in my layout and go to variables and elements. And as you can see, I have already defined two variables, vTime in buffer and vTime out buffer. Now those can be named whatever you want, but I just named them those because that's intuitive and I know what they're for. Now if we go to my attributes, I have defined an attribute a start time. Close out my model elements. First we'll focus on the logic that will determine the time spent in my activity one in buffer. We will right click on this arrival line that goes into activity one and click properties. And then we will click on logic. Here I have my attribute a start time set equal to the clock. The way you set something equal to something else is with an assignment, which is right here on the left. And then you just fill out these different parameters. What the this assignment does here in process line one um, is set that attribute equal to the system time before the entities in the in buffer of activity one. Now we'll go to the properties of activity one by clicking on it. And as you can see I have my time set as zero, my process time. For this example, I want to have it set as zero because I'm going to define the process time within my logic to simplify things. Now we'll go into my logic here in activity one. In process line one right here, I have my variable v time in buffer set to the clock minus a start time. This will give me the value of the time spent in the in buffer of this activity one. This line simply states that the variable will be set equal to the value of the current system time minus the value of the attributes a start time when we set equal to clock in the arrival logic. If you're only wanting to know the time in the in buffer, that is all you have to do. In this example, we also want to know the time in the out buffer as well. I define my processing time here in my logic at activity one. As you can see, here in process line 2, the entities will process for a triangular distribution of 3, 5, and 10. If I don't account for my process time, then my calculations for the time spent in the out buffer will be incorrect. Now we'll look here at process line 3. I have set my attribute a start time equal to the clock before the entities enter the out buffer of activity 1. Now we'll go to the logic of my routing here. And once again, I've set my variable, my second variable called vTimeOutBuffer, equal to the clock minus a start time. This will catch, capture the value of the time spent in the outbuffer of activity one. One more thing before we look at the output viewer. In activity two, I don't have an in buffer to ex ensure there will be entities that spend time in the activity one outbuffer. Now we will run the simulation. and we'll click yes to view the simulation results. Now here in our output viewer, we're interested in the value of those variables that we had set in our model. So if you click up here in the left on tables and then here under variable summary, we'll click on that. And now it gives us some statistics on those variables that we set in our model. This one being the time it spent in the activity one in buffer and this one being the time it spent in activity one out buffer. It gives us a maximum value, a current value, and an average value. And you can use those um, however you would like. And that concludes this process simulator solution. Good day and happy modeling.